I love the part uh, one of them said, God be with Josh Shapiro as he seeks to build a better world. And another said, may he never grow tired or bitter. Let's oh. hear from the governor okay, right now. Here we go. To stand before you today as Pennsylvania's 48th governor. Along the winding road that has led to this moment, I have been grounded in my family and in my faith. And so I begin by saying to my high school sweetheart and Pennsylvania's newest first lady, I love you, babe. I love you. Lori and I are blessed with four amazing children, Sophia, Jonah, Max, and Reuben. They have, they have sacrificed so much along the way so that we could serve. And I just want you to know how much I love you. And I want all of you to know just how hard I will work for your children as Lori and I have for ours. I love you guys so much. I so appreciate our history-making Chief Justice, Deborah Todd, for doing me the honor of administering the oath of office. Thank you, Madam Chief Justice. May wisdom and the pursuit of justice continue to guide you and your fellow justices of the Supreme Court, several of whom are with us today. I'm pleased to be joined by legislative leaders and legislators of both parties, along with another history maker, President Pro Tem Ward. I'm grateful to be joined by Herb and Speaker Rossi, Leader Pittman, Leader Costa, Leader McClinton, and Leader Cutler. I look forward to making progress together. I'm especially pleased to be joined today by Acting Attorney General Henry, Treasurer Garrity, and Auditor General DeFore. And I'm most grateful to have members of our congressional delegation here, led by Senator Fetterman and Senator Casey. We say a special prayer today for our senior senator for a full and speedy recovery. There is no doubt that you will be stronger than ever and continue to do good for the people of Pennsylvania for years to come. We love you, Senator. <laughs> to our history-making Lieutenant Governor, Austin Davis. <laughs> and his wife, Blair, I want to say thank you for joining Lori and I on this journey for your partnership, and for your commitment to service. We appreciate you. I am particularly touched that several of our former governors are with us today. It's a real honor to have Governor Ridge with us, to be joined. To be joined by Governor Schweiker. To be joined by Governor Corbett. And while they are here, I know Governor Rendell is watching from home. Your presence here today formally celebrates the peaceful transfer of power. It also reminds us that while I am now entrusted with this awesome responsibility, it is just for a moment in the long history of our Commonwealth. I'll now do my part to build on your work and to leave this place better off the way each of you did before me. Thank you for your service. And of course, I want to recognize my dear friends, Governor Tom Wolf and First Lady Frances Wolf. Lori and I are so grateful for your friendship over nearly two decades and your guidance through this transition. Governor Wolf has led our Commonwealth and our residents 
through some of the most challenging times in our history. And he's done so with integrity, with acumen, and with an unwavering commitment to service. Governor Wolf expanded health care to nearly one million Pennsylvanians. Invested, he invested record amounts in our public schools and he modernized state government. And thanks to his leadership, we now find ourselves in the strongest financial shape in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, allowing us to make the critical investments of tomorrow. Governor, you have exemplified what I spoke of a moment ago. You inherited the work of those who came before you. You served with honor, and you are leaving us in a better place than when we started. Thank you, Governor Wolf. Thank you. I set out to build a cabinet and a senior staff that looks like Pennsylvania and reflects the people and the communities that I just took an oath of office to serve and protect. Led by our Chief of Staff, Dana Fritz, sitting behind me here today. <laughs> sitting behind me here today is the most well-qualified and diverse set of public servants in our history. And I look forward to doing this work with them for all of you. Thank you all so very much. But most of all, I want to thank you, the good people of Pennsylvania. You see, you inspired me. You taught me important lessons. You invited me into your homes, into your union halls, into your places of worship, and into your community centers. We walked our main streets together, and I listened to you. I heard your stories, and those stories fuel my drive to serve. Your struggles give me purpose. Your smiles and your tears, they have filled my heart. Your problems have become my priorities, your causes, my concerns. And together, well, we, together we've taken on the powerful, and we have empowered the people. People like Alexis, who was ripped off by a predatory student lender and whose story inspired a fight to take on that powerful entity and bring real relief to thousands of Pennsylvanians. People like Tim, who did the backbreaking work on our roadways for decades just to have company executives steal his hard-earned benefits, but whose courage led to accountability and change like the families who I've met who've lost loved ones to the opioid crisis. They've shared their grief with me, but also their resolve to keep up the fight to protect others from the dangers of addiction made worse by corporate greed. And like the thousands of brave survivors I've met who come no matter where I am and in hushed tones tell me their stories of abuse so the institutions that covered it up can be held accountable. Your stories and your courage, it stayed with me, and it will motivate me every day as I serve as your governor. Because ultimately, in a functioning democracy, it is your voices who should be heard in the halls of government the voices of people like Danielle, who bravely told us her own story about her decision to have an abortion to save her life, and who I'm honored to have on the stage with me here today. The voice of the grandma in Lawrence County, who I met over 15 months ago in the first week of our campaign. She came up to me, she grabbed me by the lapels, and she pulled me close to her, and in that stern voice that can only come from a grandma, she looked me in the eye and she said, do not let us go back to what it was like before Roe. And thanks to so many of you here today, we won't. We won't. The small business owners like Jared Betts, who owns a community barbershop in Lancaster and is here with us on stage today, 
Like so many others, he told me about his dream and he built it, and now he just needs a level playing field in order to thrive. I remember the voices of the grieving moms who lost their loved ones, their children, to gun violence. I want you to know something, moms. Your children matter, and so do you. Your voices are powerful. Thank you for being on this stage with us here today. I remember the students brave enough to speak openly with me about their mental health struggles. Hear me on this. They are the strong ones, and it's up to us to help them. The family farmer looking to leave his land to his daughter, but lacking the capital necessary to make the investments to carry on the family legacy long enough just to see her take over. And the voices of those who put on the uniform at home and abroad to keep us safe. They leave behind those in service to us all. Today we're joined by Stephanie Mack and Brittany Siska, the wives of Trooper Martin Mack and Brandon Siska, who were killed in the line of duty just a few months ago. Thank you for being with us today. We continue to honor and respect your husbands. May their memories be a blessing. I want you to know that you, the good people of Pennsylvania, will always be my North Star. I'm mindful of the fact that you've shared those stories with me because you believe that I can make a difference for you. And that is humbling. Humbling that you've entrusted me with such a great responsibility. Not just the honor to serve as your governor, but the responsibility to stand up for what is right, to bring people together and to get real things done for you. That is my covenant with you, the people. That's our deal. You have spoke up loud and clear, and you gave me direction with your voice and with your vote. A record number of votes, I might add. It was people from all different walks of life, from rural, urban, and suburban communities, united to tell me what you think. You showed the underlying goodness within our Commonwealth, that you want a society that creates opportunity for all people. From God's country to Gettysburg, I heard you when you said you want good schools for our kids, safe communities, and an economy that gives people a shot and lifts them up. You also sent a clear message, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, when you came together to resoundingly reject extremism here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> together, together, hope defeated fear. Unity triumphed over division. We prove together that we value our freedoms and that we are willing to do the hard work necessary to protect our fundamental rights. And to those who didn't cast a vote for me, I heard you too. And I will do my best every day to be a governor for all Pennsylvanians. But right now, now is the time to join together behind the unifying strength of three simple truths that have sustained our nation over the past two and a half centuries, that above all else, beyond any momentary political differences, we value our freedom, we cherish our democracy, and we love this country. Our democracy is indeed now stronger because that historic coalition came together and fought for it, voted for it. But our democracy is not a given. As our own Pennsylvania history shows, our democracy is a constant work in progress. Pennsylvania's first constitution in 1776 was regarded as the most democratic of its time but it still took 150 years for women 
to gain the right to vote. Pennsylvania was the first state in the nation to pass a law abolishing slavery just four years later in 1780. But it took until 1847 for total abolition. You see, we worked at it together because we value our freedom. And as a people, we are committed to progress. C consider this for a moment. Our Commonwealth was founded on the promise of religious tolerance. Pennsylvania, a place where Penn invited all to come and live and worship in peace and security. And now, in this place of tolerance, I stand before you a proud American of Jewish faith who just took the oath of office to be the 48th governor of this great commonwealth on a Bible from the Tree of Life Synagogue. The scene just four years ago of the deadliest act of anti-Semitism in our nation's history. Pennsylvanians, Pennsylvanians can indeed find light in the midst of darkness and drown out the voices of hate and bigotry. Yes, we can. You see, in every chapter of this Pennsylvania story, we got better. We got stronger. We got more tolerant. Our story is one of progress and prosperity. And today, today we come together under the banner of this new administration to write our next chapter with a keen understanding of our history and the voices that will guide our future. It will require all of us to build on Penn's promise. My own faith teaches me that no one is required to complete the task, but neither are we free to refrain from it. In this capital and all throughout our Commonwealth, we have a unique responsibility to keep doing the hard and necessary work to strengthen the democracy that was born right here 246 years ago. Each of us can make a contribution. And in many different ways, we've shown that when it's all on the line, Pennsylvanians step up and do their part. We rally. Like Gen Z, anybody from Gen Z here? Like Gen Z who continue to make progress on climate change and gun violence and reproductive rights. Like the two women in Montgomery County who bravely walked into a county courthouse and asked for a marriage license before it was legal and sparked a movement. Like those who marched with Dr. King at Girard College during the Civil Rights Movement to demand righteous change like the Pennsylvania service member who carried with him one of the other Bibles I was sworn in on today when he fought to save the world from fascism and defeat the Nazis in World War II and earned himself a Purple Heart in the process. You see, they stepped up the Pennsylvania way. We are all stewards of our democracy. And I'm mindful that as we celebrate this peaceful transition of power, we are proving again that our democracy endures and the collective work to strengthen it continues. This work, well, this work is more important now than ever before. Because we have seen over the last several years, we've been reminded over the last several years of the fragility of our democracy how we have to keep working at it, how we have to keep fighting to protect it. Here in Pennsylvania, we didn't allow the extremists who peddle lies to drown out the truth. We showed that our system works. Our elections are free and fair, safe and secure. And we assume this obligation to defend our democracy, not merely to honor the work of our ancestors, but rather to build on a foundation so we can make progress for our children. That is why we do this work. You see, only by setting the table of opportunity 
and inviting all to come and sit and partake, can we advance the cause of real freedom? The kind of real freedom that comes when we devote real resources in that young child's public school to make sure she has a shot. The kind of real freedom that comes when we invest in public safety to make sure she lives past her 18th birthday. The kind of real freedom that comes when we create new pathways to opportunity by investing in VOTEC and job training programs like the ones that prepared IATSE members to construct this very stage and trained apprentice cabinet makers from the Carpenters Union to craft this podium I now speak from. The kind of real freedom that comes when you live in a commonwealth that respects you for who you are, no matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love, or who you pray to or choose not to pray to. Real freedom, real freedom that makes government a productive force for good, that allows us to tackle big challenges again and dream of brighter, more prosperous tomorrows, where our air is clean, our water is pure, our communities healthier, and our economy stronger. Where poverty, poverty doesn't get ignored and prosperity isn't limited to certain zip codes in Pennsylvania. Where political differences cause debate, but do not give rise to demagogues. The real freedom that leaves its citizens with the confidence of knowing that the doors of opportunity will swing open if they simply push them through where everyone gets a shot and no one is left behind. That is real freedom. And that is our challenge. That is our calling. And that is the next chapter in our Pennsylvania story that we start writing today all together. That is our challenge. And so, my fellow Pennsylvanians, I honor the work of those who came before me. I affirm my pact with the people to listen and to be your voice. And I accept the responsibility that you've bestowed upon me to be the next link in this chain of progress with humility. And so, with my feet firmly rooted in we the people of Pennsylvania, with my heart open to others and my eyes fixed ahead, I am prepared now to do my part to move our Commonwealth forward. Thank you for this honor. May God bless you, and may God watch over the women and men of the Pennsylvania National Guard. Thank you so very much. Thank you.